in Alhamdulillah, without a doubt, without a doubt, every word that I say here is calculated. When I say without a doubt, it means without any doubt whatsoever. All praise and thanks <coughs> and gratitude belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do I say that? In Arabic, the word hamd is incredible. It touches two things, at least two things. Gratitude and praise. That's how we start our day. That's how we start the khutbah. Without a doubt, all praise and gratitude belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for that reason, we praise Him. We thank Him. We show our gratitude to everything that He has bestowed upon us, to every single thing that He has given us. Think about it. Whenever I ask this question, some of you know I stand in front of a bunch of teenagers on Sundays. When I ask a question, everyone thinks about grand things. Think about every single aspect of your life. You got up this morning, didn't you? You said, Alhamdulillah. You were able, Allah actually gave you an opportunity to get up in good health and praise Him and thank Him and do your prayer. Alhamdulillah. So here what how it works. Each time that we come, we fall short. We ask for forgiveness. Forgiveness from what? There are a lot of bounties. There's a lot of awesomeness Allah has given you and I. Do we fulfill all that in the manner that has been given to us? Not necessarily. Not true. We ask for forgiveness for all shortcomings. And ask for help. What do you mean ask for help? Well, there are things that are within our control. There are things that are outside of our control. Even that are in your, within your control, you always ask for help. When I stop fear who, when we be when I talk about and we believe in Allah, when we put our full trust, unconditional trust in Him. When I hold the Billahi and Shururi and Fusina, we have two things within us. There are two things. There are all those outside factors that we think, and we are quick to blame. Say, hey, I did this because. An outside factor, namely Iblis, namely Shaitan, namely your number one enemy. Why your number one enemy? Because Allah said so in His book, He is your number one enemy. We're quick to blame Him because He did something, He made me do it. We say that. On the other side, Allah says, There's something within you that you need to control it, and that makes you do things that you don't want to do, you're not supposed to do. That's why we ask protection. When I would have shuri and fusina, what means say yeati amalina. Anytime you do this, your nafs, your self things that are within you that you supposedly have control over it, it that makes you do something, it leaves a, leaves a reminiscence, leaves a byproduct. And we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for <coughs> protection from that. What does that mean a byproduct? <coughs> Very simple example. One of, one of the days I was sitting there during, during khutbah and the khatib is giving an, 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 an amazing khutbah. One of my brothers sitting next to me, I don't know who he is, I've never seen him before, and he was doing this, constantly checking social media stuff. Young man sitting next to him sees that, oh, hey, that's a cool thing to do, maybe I should do the, the same thing. He gets his handy dandy device and he does the, the, the uh, social media stuff too, taking picture, posting on Instagram and all that. That is a byproduct of something that the, the, the other gentleman did, the other brother did. He wasn't aware of it, he wasn't thinking of it, maybe he wasn't calculating it, he wasn't, whatever it was, subconsciously and consciously he did something, out of his action someone else was affected and did the same thing. And we're asking subhanahu wa ta'ala, protect us from this, ya Allah. Within your control, you ask for protect. وَنَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَحْلَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهِ وَنَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدٍ عَبْدُهُ رَسُولُهُ Allah Ta'ala in the Quran al Kareem, Allah says in His book, let's send it to you and I. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, O believers, all of you are believers, not O Muslimun, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, you already know um, Iman is a next stage, elevated stage, you have been granted that. Alhamdulillah for that, that Allah calls you Mu'min, not Muslim. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, O believers, Ittaqullah, protect yourselves. 
often you, you hear that it says, fear Allah. And um, I had a tough time explaining that to my uh, students. Everyone thinks, everyone thinks that Allah is out there to get you. That's not, the, that's not what Allah says. That's not why Allah created you and I. Allah gifted you everything that you have here. And that means you protect yourself in a way that you do not disappoint Allah. How's, uh, what is an example? Uh, these days when you travel, you have travel by plane. You have to have an ID card with you, passport or some government issue ID. If you travel abroad, you have to have a passport with you. You have to have a visa. That is protecting yourself. If you cross the border without it, can you come back with this? Day, day, day and age, I highly doubt you can come back. You're protecting yourself. You're exercising taqwa. Each time that you, that you see a red light, you do not cross the red light. When your chachu is sitting there with a gun in you, you're exercising taqwa. You're protecting yourself from getting a hefty ticket. Allah is saying, ittaqullah. Protect yourself from displeasing Allah from disappointing Allah, from the things that this creator, this master of yours and mine said and given you, make sure you do not, do not cross that line. The way he deserves it, that's a big topic. That's a huge topic. What does that mean, the way Allah deserves it, I should be protecting myself? And, and the uh, companions of Prophet Sallallahu asked Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and the ayah immediately came and it said, According to your capacity, just leave it at that. According to what you, the capability Allah has given you, make sure that you protect yourself. Under no circumstance, don't you dare, if you understand Arabic, this is a heavy word. This is a heavy, heavy. The inna part says, don't you ever dare die that you forgot the rule we just explained to you that you depart this world without being Muslim. That's a command from Allah. A few days ago, a week ago, or two weeks ago or so, we were blessed to have uh, our uh, prominent scholar, uh, Sheikh Salah Nas here in NCC, and, uh, and he, gave a, he gave a lecture. So I was, I was uh, fortunate to uh, be in his company one day, and I asked a question. Um, opportunities are rare to actually see an amazing scholar and be able to ask a question. So the question I ask is this, that has been bothering me and been pondering upon it for a long time. The question is asking Allah. The question was dua, to ask Allah for something. Well, I hope I wasn't rude the way I put it, and I'm going to put it the same way to you guys. Say, so, you know, in this day age, you have this little thing you hear. We have instant gratification. Anything that we want, we get it instantly. As a matter of fact, if something is slow, if a Wi-Fi is slow, you get aggravated. If something takes 0.2 seconds to download, you get really aggravated. As a matter of fact, I was in a um, tangent, I was on a plane, and they said, Wi-Fi is complimentary. We just gave it to you. I'm like, oh, cool. So I'm like, hey, let me log on to Wi-Fi, see what, what, what I can do. The guy next to, next to me, um, he already believed that he deserved to have the Wi-Fi. So it didn't work in, for a period of time. He was so upset. He was using foul language and all that, that what kind of thing is this that Wi-Fi doesn't work? We already, as if we own this, as if this is ours, the gratification is there. When you order something online today, order something online, you get instantly a confirmation. Two days later, it shows up by your doorsteps for a free shipment, unless you want it 24 hours. We want everything that fast. We treat our relationship with God, with Allah, the same way. Often when we make a dua, when we ask something from Allah, we want it right away. We want it immediately. We want to, like, what is this? I asked two days ago, God, what happened? I haven't seen a response. I didn't see the delivery. They didn't come to my doorsteps. And often when we ask something, we ask at a time of the need. When we really need it. When I really want that A that I didn't study, I want it that God please help me out with my chemistry so I could get an A. 
When we desperately, when we didn't do our due diligence and we really want to get married and we looked at someone, it's like, oh my God, this is it. She is it. Allah, please help me out in this instance. I really want to buy this car. I want this house. We want instant, instant answer for everything. So that's what I asked my sheikh. I said, uh, respectfully, sheikh, how do we, how do we understand this? What, what does this mean? When we ask Allah, what does that mean to us? And uh, when you sit in a, in a company of scholars, every word is so profound. His answer, I was expecting a 15, 20 minute lecture. His answer was maybe 30 seconds, maybe one minute, but it's had so much in it. It's so much in it, so much meaning in it. So I came across, a, I came across an ayah after pondering upon what his response was, which I'm gonna give it to you in a couple of minutes or so because I don't have a whole lot to talk about. Allah says this, قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي وَهَنَ لَعَظْمُ مِنِّي وَشْتَعْلَ الرَّكْسُ شَيْدًا وَلَمْ أَكُمْ بِدْعَائِكَ رَبِّ شَقِيَّةً The translation was like this. Oh my God, oh my Lord, my Rabb, my Rabb, my Master, indeed, my bones have been weakened and my head has been filled with white head, white hair, white ashes. And I've never been and I've never been in my supplication to you, oh my Lord, and happy. Loose translation. This is about one of the prophets, Zechariah. <clears throat> one of the righteous persons, Zechariah. Listen to what he is saying. Listen to what he's saying. This is the dua. This is the supplication he's asking for Allah. I have never, ever been unhappy. Never been unhappy. About and have you calling you? I'm calling you with my God. Even though my hair is like white ash, and I have I see weaknesses in my bones, I see weaknesses in everything I do, including my supplication to you. I never been shaki. Never been shakiya. You know what is shaki? I never been depressed. I never ever ever been unhappy. I never ever been disappointed with your response, with your delivery, with what you have given me. What Sheikh Nas said, at the core of everything is trust in God, trust in Allah. Have a good opinion of Allah. If you come to that, come to that level of understanding that. Allah has given you everything here for your benefit. He doesn't get anything from your praise. He doesn't get anything from your charity. He doesn't get anything from your time. But He has given you all that to make you happy. If you have that level of understanding, then you have a good trust in Allah that when He says He's going to respond to your prayer, He's going to respond to your prayer. From prophetic, from prophetic knowledge that we know, whenever we ask, whenever we ask in this world, anything about this world, so here's our, our concept has been completely uh, upside down. Whenever we ask about this world, it is general asking, never specific. We have changed that to a specific. I really want this house, Ya Allah. I really want an A in this. The, the, the interesting part for me was that when uh, football was uh, playing, one of my buddy sitting there and constantly for one hour and a half making dua for the, for the team to win. And I was shaking my head and subhanAllah. So I asked, what are you doing? He said, I'm asking Allah to help us to win. I'm like, okay. We are in that level of understanding. But, Rabbana atina fid dunya hasana. What is hasana? Hasana is not a bait. Hasana is not a car. Hasana is not marrying someone. Hasana is everything. It's general. When the prophetic thing has taught us, when you ask, ask general. And also ask because have that kind of level of trust in God, in Allah, that He will give you the best. When you ask for something that has happened in my life, multiple times when I ask for them something specific that may or may not be good for me but you have to have the trust in God that he will give you something better than you're asking that is what the purpose of the dua is 
That's what the purpose of supplication is. You have to have that level of relationship built already with your master that you will get it. And every dua gets accepted. One way or one shape or one way or another way. Some way it will get accepted. You will get something. And here's here's the, the level of trust you need to have in God. If you don't see it here, you ask for something specific, you didn't get it. You have to have the, the critical pillar of our belief is, is to believe in the next life. That is at the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah. It says whoever has Iman, has Yawm Al-Akhir is one of the things that they believe. You should have that trust and believe that you will get it by multitudes in the next life. My sincere apology again because your khatib supposed to be here and give you an awesome khutbah, not here. I just had to just whip something here out of the top of my head. If I said anything that doesn't make sense or offend anyone, I sincerely apologize. I say this to me and to you. Ask Allah for forgiveness. Without a doubt, He is the one, the only one can forgive you. The only one can give you what you're asking for. So make this 30 seconds and I'm going to sit here. Count and ask for something that is valuable. That is to ask for forgiveness. إن الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. An amazing part of the Quran is this about the recited. There is one act Allah says He does it. Only part in the Quran, the only part. This is a completely different khutbah on its own. One of these days we're going to talk about it, inshallah. And He's Allah is commanding all of you to do it, and we're going to do it collectively, inshallah. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi Ya ayyuhu al-ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim innaka hamid majid Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. ورا ما يفيد الدعاء القرآن الصدق. ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا. ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا. ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به. واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين آمين. The teacher in me doesn't allow me not to do one thing and I've done it at all the times that I've stood here and this time is not going to be an exception. You're all going to get a homework and here's the homework. But the way the way khutbas conclude every single Juma. In almost every masjid, from the ayat of Quran, from chapter 16, ayah 90, I believe. Inna Allah wa wa Allah is commanding you, each one of you, me included, and you all, three things to do. And avoid at all costs three things. Here's my homework to all of you. I'm not going to translate it. I give you the address, 1690. Go look it up. Make it a part of your learning this afternoon. What are the three things that you're supposed to do? Ponder upon it. Don't, don't just look into shallow translation. Ponder upon it. Incredible wisdom. And avoid three things. If there has been my life struggle, if I guarantee you that you have some level of understanding these three and three, that is the success that you need. You will lead, you will earn success that you have never ever seen before. In Allah, yamur bil adli wal ihsan wa ita il qurba wa yanha an al fahshai wal munkir wal baghi. Bi alikum na alikum tadakkaroon wa aqimus salat.